You know, I kill all Decepticons, good or bad. Well, I didn't think you'd stoop so low. What about respecting your elders? Oh, right. Sup guys, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new Bayway knockoff of the Transformers Studio Series, Jetfire. Now, news of Bayway doing a Jetfire came out of nowhere for me, as I had no idea Bayway was doing something like this. Usually ahead of time, we'd get a leaked photo of the prototypes. Perhaps I didn't get that memo. But, nonetheless, he's here. And he looks really good. He comes with more accessories, by the way, which we'll get to later on in the video. And, for the record, this is Bayway's latest installment of their uh, series of the uh, knockoffs of the Studio Series figures. And just to think it was going to be a knockoff of that 102 Optimus Prime, no, not yet. But until then, there's that MHZ knockoff. But anyways, back to the figure. Let's take a quick look at his long packaging. Now, let me bring out the bigger camera, and here you go. On the front, you get this nice artwork of what you get inside the packaging, as well as the big knockoff name. Of course, it's not going to be Jetfire because that's copyright. So, what do they come with? Explorer Elder. Interesting. Very interesting. On the top of the box, you get absolutely nothing. And on the bottom of the box, is all boring. On the side, is also nothing. And what do you know? Same thing on the other side. Then you turn to the back of the packaging, and they still have an artwork of what you get inside the box, as well as some pictures of what else you could do with that figure. Well, anyways, that's pretty much it. Now, back to the figure. So starting off, painting and sculpting, pretty good, pretty good. Although this is a knockoff from a figure from 2019, so yeah. Anyways, there looks as if there's more metallic silver paint around the figure, and the black paint on the back seems quite similar to the Studio Series one. I must say, nothing really changed with the details other than a darker shade of uh, silver for the paint, and the feet are die-cast metal. Well, actually, the heel spurs are. For some reason, the front of the foot isn't die-cast. Interesting. But anyways, quality-wise, is it too bad? Unlike the original Studio Series figures, the shoulder joints aren't too tight enough to tab this off. But I feel as if the ratchet joints for the uh, legs are somewhat slightly looser than the originals, at least on my copy. Also, there are certain parts in the figure where they just simply tab in rather than just abruptly stop midway and then tab in. There also appears to be some slight shades of uh, weathering, but it doesn't really work that well. Almost forgot to point that out. But anyways, let's move to accessories, starting off with this staff. Now, before with the Studio Series 1, this part used to be completely black, but the only thing black now is the wheels, which is more accurate to the staff in the film. Anyways, you just plug it onto the bottom of his hand, and there you go. After that, moving on to the axe, looks a little bit similar to the original one. It's just the shade of the silver that they used is a little bit different. Anyways, there is a slot placed in between the thumb and the three fingers, where that's where this goes. And there you go, Jetfire with his axe. Whoosh. Okay, it fell off. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all of his accessories. Aside from a buttload of bits and pieces for Jet Powered Prime. Anyways, with the accessories out of the way, let's move on to articulation. It would seem as if this head is on a ball joint, but no, it's not. It's on an up and a down hinge joint, and then also a side to side hinge joint, which can also act as a full rotation at the head. These little side whiskers, I suppose, also flap out sometimes. And then if you want, you could count the wings as articulation, as well as these side panels, which are on a few. Uh, amounts of hinge joints three to be exact i think full rotation at the arm bend at the elbow elbow swivel wrist swivel and the wrist can also do a double bend that's because that's used for transformation but can also be used for articulation because why not uh, unfortunately no waist swivel but of course the legs can spread leg can move forward can also move backwards thigh swivel. There is also a hinge joint over here, a hinge joint over here. This thing is on a swivel joint. Then it could also bend, but that's used for transformation. Also, these pieces are a little bit more annoying now as they do have this uh, tab right here, which stops them from plugging onto that tab right there. The foot can move up and down and can also rock from side to side. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for articulation. Now let's move on to size comparison. Starting off here is next to Studio Series Jetfire and no, 
the knockoff is not smaller. I didn't feel like positioning the legs on the original the same way the knockoff was, so that's why it looks a little off. Here he is next to the Bayway knockoff of the Studio Series 32 Optimus Prime, Bayway Revenge of the Fallen Megatron, Studio Series The Fallen. Here he is next to some other Decepticons such as Grinder, Starscream, Sideways, Soundwave. Moving on to some Autobots, here he is next to the original, original Studio Series Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Jolt, Sideswipe, and lastly, here he is next to the Sam Widwicky figurine. And the gang's all here. Well, Studio Series-wise. We still don't have a Studio Series Revenge of the Fallen version of Ratchet and Ironhide. And of course, the Twins. Let alone an Ice Cream Truck version of the Twins. Might as well throw in an updated 32 Optimus for extra credit. And I know, I know, there are also the triplets, but I didn't feel like getting them out as I don't have the stands for them. But anyways, hope we get more Revenge of the Fallen figures. At least an updated weathering version of Ratchet, Ironhide, and Optimus Prime. But who knows, maybe in the future they'll probably do something like that. Anyways, I think it's time we get down a transformation. But rather than starting off with converting this guy from robot to jet, we're going to start off with the jet-powered Prime configuration. Only the process is much different than the original. Now, the reason why the process is much different is because now we have a whole bunch of these pieces as well as this nice and cool-looking gun. I believe all of this is based off the DNA upgrade kit. And we're going to be using this guy. So starting off, I feel it would be better to disassemble Jetfire, as what you will do first is remove these, and then open this up, move this out, and then what you're going to do is untab that. Next, what you will do is untab this, and don't worry about these pieces. Actually, you're probably going to want to worry about them. If you still want to use this as the bigger gun, you're going to remove these black pieces, and you won't need them anymore. But for now, toss this aside. What you're going to do next is you're going to untab the legs, slide them off, and this is going to form into the backpack. Starting off, just fold that gray piece down. Uh, make sure this is like nice. Move this up forward, same thing with this, and then untab this as well. And then you're going to remove these gray pieces as well. Now, this is the normal configuration, but on the Bayway, it's a little bit different as you move this down, and then move this up, same thing with the other side, and then you untab this and then leave it out like so you could also move this out if you want same thing for the other side also you can spread this out as well now make sure you have this black piece slid under the thing right there because that's going to be important when sliding this onto optimus prime's back next let's work on the legs first what you're going to want to do is untab this completely yep you're going to need that to tab off i suppose that's why the swivel joint was so loose anyways you're going to move that to the side Push this down, and then you essentially just start decorating this thing. You're going to come to this front thing, and you're going to make sure you shove that in, and then make sure it stays there. Hopefully it doesn't try to fall off. That would suck. And then you come back to this panel over here. Make sure you plug it in right there. And there you go. That's one leg done. And here's the other one as well. Leave that to the side. Now we got to work on a few steps for this figure in order to combine the whole thing. What you're going to want to do first is make sure you fold that in. This also helps, but you're going to move this out and then fold in that wheel. Same thing for the other side. What you're going to do next is remove this chest piece and swap it out for this additional chest piece that Bayway Jetfire came with, just like the Studio Series one. Make sure you plug it in right there, and then you just cl close those back in. Oh, and make sure you have these tabs out like so. And then next, what you're going to do is open this out. Make sure that doesn't tab it. I don't know why that tabbed off, but then you're just going to go ahead and leave it right there. Once again, make sure these gray tabs are sticking outwards. They're easy to forget as it doesn't look noticeable, and they're also hidden inside the grill, so be careful with that. What helps is quickly moving this out, which reveals the tab, sort of, and then you just rotate it. And then there you go. That's Optimus. Anyways, you're just going to tab that in, and then tab that in as well for some reason it's a little hard to do but anyways i got it in next you're gonna come back to this slot right here and you'll focus on this piece right here make sure the bottom tab can't see it too well but that tab on the bottom of this big tab is gonna go on that slot make sure it tabs in and then there's also this piece which will tab in right there make sure it Tabs in, there you go. You do the same thing for the other side. And then we could come back to tabbing on the backpack onto the back of Optimus, which is, I believe, the tricky part. It would be best if you moved the wheels down 
just for now. And then squeeze in the grills because the tips of the grills is going to go through this slot right there. Make sure it all slides in. It's a little bit hard to do, and especially if the tab tends to pop off. Perhaps it would be best to have your thumb on the bottom of that black tab piece and make sure this all comes in. Hopefully nothing breaks. That would that would be bad, but for some reason it's not tabbing in. Come on. There we go. There we go. And then next what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you tab in that gray tab onto the slot on this big section right here. Let me move the arm out. And there we go. Tab in. Doesn't want to. Okay, there we go. Same thing for the other side. And then fold the wheels in. And then, of course, you come back to this rubber thing. To which it is possible to remove this rubber part and then realign it. But I'm not going to do that. What you're going to do is you're going to tab that. Make sure this doesn't break on the original Studio Series Jetfire. One of these tabs broke and it got a little bit more difficult to plug this in onto the chest. Anyways, be sure to plug that onto his chest. And then we got just a few more steps to decorate this figure, actually. You're going to come back to these cone pieces. Make sure you plug them on to the top right there make sure you tab them in nice and snug as they do happen to pop off real easily and then turn to the back this figure does come with these uh panels right here anyways make sure you tab them in and there you go looks a little bit more movie accurate next you come to this split it apart tab them onto the shoulder pad and then make sure you tab this gun on the bottom of the arm and then lastly we come back to this big gun which does have this long thing and it's very annoying of course it would be simple to tab this in but then this thing. And then next you're going to try to tab this in right here. But it doesn't tab into anything. So what your best bet is to do is just push that in on the way. And hopefully it stays there. And there you go. There's Jet Powered Prime. Now the Studio Series 1 wasn't all that bad. But the Bayway 1 does Jet Powered Prime a little bit more justice. It's alright buddy. It's alright. Now thankfully the copy that I got for the knockoff of the Studio Series 32 Optimus Prime comes with some tight joints. Because that would allow it to hold all the heavy equipment. But anyways I guess we could talk about this thing. What you do with the other part of Jetfire. I myself have trouble aligning this properly, but I will do my best. What you're going to do is move this out, fold this in. Of course, fold in the hands as well. Untab them, move them down a bit, and then push this downwards as well. To which you come back to this, tab that in, and then make sure it tabs in. You come back to these annoying gray pieces, which look like they don't do much, but they do in fact tab in to uh, reveal the muzzle, and then you just tab that in as well. Push this down, and then this is my least favorite part out of transforming this guy from uh, what was left of the robot mode to gun mode, but you have to properly align the arms right here so that way it tabs in with that tab on this panel right here. I suppose what does help is making sure that this slot tabs into that tab right there, so that could help with uh, aligning properly. And then you'd expect this to tab in, right? Well, sort of wrong. You do have to fiddle with this thing to make sure it tabs in completely. And then there you go. There's the gun. Now to tab it in, it would be best if you removed this and then move this as far back as you can because you're going to need some space to uh, tab that in. Make sure it tabs in. It does not want to tab in. That's great. This is one of the few things you kind of have to fiddle with. But anyways, you tab that in, and there you go. Optimus has an oversized arm cannon. Sheesh, this should be a minigun, or maybe some, like, hyper-lethal plasma cannon. In all honesty, they should have added a holster somewhere on the top over here, so that way the other hand can hold it, because this thing appears too heavy to hold with one hand. Sheesh, when Jetfire suggested that by taking his parts, Optimus Prime would have a power he'd never known, he did not mean that as a figure of speech, that's for sure. And no, there is no weapon storage for this thing, no way. But for the sake of movie accuracy, just leave it to this. This gun on the left was already powerful enough. And then if you want, you could tab the sword onto the wrist right there, because Optimus Prime also was using a sword throughout the fight of him versus the fallen and there you go movie accurate optimus prime now what do you do with the other accessories you just toss them aside you don't need them anymore now how about integrating all of the jet fire pieces onto the original studio series optimus prime i don't know if it works to be honest i haven't tried it don't want to try it but i'm sure there's another video that talks about that and of course here is a comparison of him and his Big brother. Yeah, from head to toe, Megatron is still taller than Optimus. Sheesh. 
At this point, everything Optimus tries to do, he still can't get taller than his brother. Anyways, with the jet-powered Prime thing over with, let's get down to transformation. So starting off, it would be best and simpler to work on the legs. Starting off by folding this side piece down, extending this, uh, rotate that, and then push this down, move this out like so. Push this down as well, push that as down as well. Oh, make sure you have this out as well. And then rotate this, and then close this in as well. Open the flap, and then make the attempt to shift this piece downwards. Make sure it tabs on alongside the other black piece. And you should get something like this. You do the same thing for the other side. Make sure it's pushed up like this. Untab the rubber piece, fold in the hand. Same thing for the other side. And then you turn to the head, move it up, fold in the whiskers, and then you can push this forward, extend it all the way outwards. Oh, and make sure you untap those pieces so that way you can push this all the way down. And then we come back to this thing right here. Uh, okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. Make sure this entire section is straightened, and then you might want to tab in the head somewhere in there. And then make sure everything over here is straight. Make sure you close this in, because next what you're going to want to do is push the arms down, and make sure they tab in. Same thing with the other side. And then make sure these hands are facing towards the bottom. And then push this down. Shift this up forward. Make sure... Everything tabs in, as well as these pieces right here. Push this down. Make the attempt to untab this, and then straighten out like so. Push this all the way in. Now, these arms are supposed to tab into somewhere, but it's a little difficult to spot it by pushing this in. Oh, wait, maybe I got it in. I don't know. And then you also make sure you push that in as well, and then tab in this together, or make the attempt to... And then push everything in, like so. And then tab that in. And then you're going to come to this rubber piece. That tab is going to peg it onto that slot right there. Make sure it tabs in. And here you have Jetfire in his jet mode. Now, that transformation was somewhat hectic, let alone filming the transformation. But I did my best. Anyways, on the top of this jet, it's quite long. And it looks really good. This is a faithful replica of the SR-71 Blackbird, as that's what this plane is called. And I believe it's a stealth plane. But anyways, you flip to the bottom, and of course, it is Kibbletopia. But it's alright. Now, of course, there is weapon storage, along with two additional parts from the DNA upgrade kit. Anyways, we come to the staff, fold it in completely, slide it in, and it should tab in. To which the folded staff can also serve as the front landing gear. The other two are located on the back. And no, the wheels do not roll. Also, you might want to fold in the back landing gear if you do in fact want to tab in these. But before you put anything in, I recommend you tab in the axe first. And then tab in the panels. There's a slot right here to which there is this big square tab that will just simply plug in. And there you go. Next, you work on these pieces, to which I feel it would be best if you pushed the head down. For some reason, it's not pushing down. Anyways... You tab that right there, along with the other side tabbing in as well. And then you just go ahead and push the head right back in. And there you go. There's a jet fire with some extras added onto his plane. But of course, there are other pieces from the Jet Powered Prime DNA upgrade kit that need to go into storage. That's where Optimus comes in. Now this, you just got to slide in right there. Same thing with the other side. Although you got to be careful whether it goes over here or over here, which is something I'm not sure about myself. Anyways, you come back to these, you just plug them in right there. Same thing with the other guy. And then you come back to this, tab it in onto that slot right there that you can barely see. Anyways, plug it in, and I guess I didn't mess up. Yay! Tell you what, this almost looks like a thruster boost of some sort. But anyways, we're not done yet. What you're going to do next is you're going to plug in the two feet. And there are these slots over here that are supposed to tab, but they don't do that job so well. So they just, they, they basically just rest over there. Anyways, what you're going to do next is you're going to come to this tab on the gun, and it's going to tab right on the uh, left slot, not the right. Anyways, make sure that plugs in. And then what happens to the string? I have no idea. Just, just slide it on right there and hope that this holds it in place, I, I guess. I can't think of any other place where it should be stored. But then lastly, you come back to the gun and tap it on to the side of the truck right there. And yeah, there you go. That's pretty much the weapon storage, I suppose. Looks good. Looks okay. 
but I do like how armored up Optimus Prime is. That's something that I think is pretty cool. So what happens with the other pieces? I don't know. I believe the chest add-on was supposed to go somewhere, but I was never able to figure that out, and this piece was not in the DNA upgrade kit, I think. So yeah, not too sure where that goes. But anyways, this looks really nice. Although it would be funny seeing Optimus Prime tow Jetfire. Only Optimus Prime's truck mode is a semi-truck, not a tow truck. But, anyways, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's all I had to say for this guy. Overall, pretty solid knockoff. Definitely recommend picking this guy up. If you want him, you could get him on Show Z Store for a good price. Assuming they still have it on Show Z Store. They kind of sell out on Show Z Store quite quickly. But never in AliExpress, which is where I got this figure from. I got him for roughly around 44 bucks, which is pretty good. Definitely worth it considering how much the original Studio Series Jetfire goes for let alone him alongside the original DNA upgrade kit, which also goes for like 70 bucks, which is crazy. So I'd highly recommend just getting the Bayway knockoff, as you get more for just 44 bucks rather than 144 bucks. Maybe even more than that with the original on the original DNA upgrade kit. Yeesh. But anyways, if you like what you saw in this video, be sure to slam that like button, share this with your friends as well. Be sure to turn on post notifications so that way you don't miss another video. And most importantly, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button so that way you can pass 100,000, blah, 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 this and that. Thanks for watching. See ya.